My name is Jeremy Harrison and I'm the Programme Director for our brand new Masters Programme in Actor Musicianship and I'm here today with Paul Hart who is a graduate of Rose Bruford's directing programme. Uh, he left the college in 2008 and is currently the Artistic Director of the Watermill Theatre which is an intimate space in the middle of the Berkshire countryside but it's a powerhouse, an artistic powerhouse uh, and as a as an institution, it's kind of been synonymous with the actor musician movement, having been the home of some major productions which have toured the world and, uh, in the case of John Doyle's work, have found their way from Bagner to the West End and then to Broadway. So, it's a pleasure to have Paul with us today. Um, Paul, can I ask you, first of all, you trained here at Rose Bruford. Mm. We've been known as you know, the, the, the drama school that has championed actor musicianship. We've had a course uh, exploring that area of theatre practice since the 90s. So I'm assuming you were introduced to actor musicianship here at Bruford's. So it'd be lovely perhaps to hear a little of what those early experiences at Bruford uh, did and how they informed your practice now. Yeah, totally. I mean, uh, in terms of the sort of full scale of the journey at the, of the work that I now direct, I would say 90% is actor musician work and before I came to Rose Bruford um, I hadn't even seen an actor musician production I didn't really know that it existed as a form um, and I think the sort of main component of uh, coming to Rose Bruford was the interaction with you know students on that course um, and creating work with them over a period of, a period of time and a sort of growing interest in that particular area of work. Um, and we quite often would go to the Watermill and see various shows at the weekend um, and sort of established an interest in the form in terms of what was happening in the industry, as well as coming back here and using it really as a, uh, a playground to experiment with ideas and um, think about what isn't happening in the industry, what we'd like to bring to it as well. Um, so I sort of left this place feeling like there was opportunities with the work, almost feeling sort of um, a sense of entitlement that we had a right to have a go at doing it in a different way to what we'd seen and the kind of work that we'd created here. Um, and, you know, having that sense of ensemble really at the heart of um, what we were trying to create absolutely came from working with that group of people, many of whom I still work with now. Um, and there's a sort of lovely flow with people, you know, coming out of this place all the time. Um, you know that when you work with a Rose Bruford student, you're already entering into a shared language of, of sorts, I suppose. So it's been a big influence on the work that I've done ever since, really. And how would you define actor musicianship because I know you know in, in the book I was sort of keen to sort of steer people away from thinking of it as a genre of theatre because it seems to me it's defined by the presence of the actor musician rather than by the product itself because that appears to be multifarious but I wonder what's your take on actor musicianship as a thing? Yeah yeah I mean for me it's 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 always been about the sense of musicality in the performers more than it's been about the literal sense of um, even having instruments. So the fact that you can go into a room with any kind of text and speak in a different way, have a kind of shorthand with a group of performers that, you know, is really about um, how you kind of work on the kind of subconscious of a piece almost um, and not speaking just literally about how you define a moment or a piece of text or... Um, uh, you know, a, a, a specific of what needs to happen in any given place or time. Um, so it, it, that's what it has always enabled in terms of working with someone with a sense of musicality. Um, so that is, the, mu the musicality is the sort of definition of what, what it is really for me. Yeah, and that's lovely to hear. And I think, you know, at Bruford's, we, that's how we've defined it too, this idea that it's a, 
rather than two disciplines that, that, that you know, it's this quadruple threat analogy that people use all the time, rather than you becoming this sort of peculiar circus artist who can kind of play an instrument and act and dance and do all these things, for me it is, it's that overlap. And, and we've defined that here as this notion of musicality. So it, it, it's really interesting to hear you kind of locate that for you as well. What, so you're running a building, you have to program work, how do you think actor musicianship fits in terms of the contemporary audience? How does it play out, I guess quite literally, for your audiences? Yeah, well, it's, it's interesting, you know, I find in terms of thinking about uh, the development of the form and its link to, well particularly now, to commercial theatre. Um, I mean, in a sort of practical sense, I suppose I always think of the watermill as being somewhere where you have to think commercially to an extent in that you need titles that are going to sell for six to eight weeks. Um, and I think that's, you know, over time why the musical um, slot has become so popular because people have bought in to titles, but they've also bought into the way that those titles are, are done. Um, and therefore, for me, it, it allows a degree of experimentation that you can't do if you're just doing a commercial tour. And as you said in the introduction, a lot of our work does go on to tour commercially, but I think the work is interesting because it, the seeds of it are, are from a place where we're not thinking like that. We're not thinking that it has to tick those kind of objectives. Um, and we can think therefore about the form in a way that is, is potentially more exciting or certainly appeals to me more. Um, and I always think of something that uh, Sarah Travis said to me about working on that production of Sweeney Todd with John Doyle at the Watermill, which was the sense of going into the theatre on the first night and being absolutely terrified that they'd screwed up Sondheim. Mm. And that sense of risk that um, I think has to be attached to uh, any production, you know, in that theatre. And, and I think we're able to do because we've got an audience who, to a certain degree, are kind of on board with that who want to see, you know, those musicals stripped bare and rebuilt again in some kind of new fashion. So it's quite an open brief in terms of what we, what we can do. But, um, you know, the musicals has been the place where it's started because it got people in through the doors, you know, mm. and that's, that's important when you're in the middle of nowhere and, you know, you've got to get in a car to, to get there anyway. Well, absolutely. And I guess actor musicianship offers th your theatre and those musicals a, a kind of a new life, doesn't it? And that's what I'm hearing you talk about, the kind of the fact that the presence of the actor musicians requires a kind of renegotiation and a reimagining of that work. And I know that's what John Doyle found so exciting in his career, you know, finding that working with actor musicians freed him, actually. Yeah. And I get that sense in that beautiful intimacy of the watermill that your audiences share in that sense of we are you know, like Sarah Travis, watching something being done in a way that it's never been done before. Yeah. Um, well, look, with, with that in mind, I wonder, you know, we're, we're launching this MA programme largely because I feel there's more work to be done. It, you know, we're training on our undergraduate course, you know, emerging performers, many of whom I know find their way to your theatre space. But, you know, they're there to service the industry as it exists. But I get a sense, even from conversations we've had, that there's more to be found, that somehow actor musicianship is uh, still somehow in its infancy. Mm. And I, I'm just interested in what you think the next step might be, and then maybe what role we could play. You know, what role can we here as an institution, can I as someone leading a programme with an ambition to continue to explore and experiment? Mm. What would you like to see happen next? Well, it's interesting, isn't it, because so much is... Um you know, feels like it's based on the very particular demands of uh, any given title. Once you're in the room, you've got a problem to solve and you've got four weeks to solve it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I feel that pressure very ast astutely in terms of, you know, the regularity of it. But, um, but what Brewfood has offered over a period of years, I think, um, generally in terms of the Actor Muso work is is that kind of uh, laboratory whereby you can think slightly bigger, you can think slightly more long term, you can um, allow performers to have a different kind of 
uh, voice within the room as much as anything. And that, that to me, is the thing that uh, is the big difference about um, when I've done stuff commercially and when I've done stuff very much on my own basis, because um, the process that I love, um, not only sort of through the, the stuff that I've done more recently, but also I suppose through working with Propeller for a number of years, is very much a kind of um, shared sense of how can we make this work, um, and the kind of miracle of someone playing an instrument on stage when you don't expect them to. <laughs> that there's no sort of complicit sense that the audience are going to go, of course they play the trombone in that moment, you know that it's a surprise for all of us and we should embrace that and um, kind of go back to the, the kind of simplicity of um, what it is to pick up an instrument for the first time. Because the audience really want to share that, I think. They aren't necessarily musical, although many of course are, and have an appreciation of the musicality of it. Um, but it's that kind of seed that always really interests me when you when you really strip a piece back and go to the, the heart of it. Um, and, you know, actors, I just hear more and more that actor musicians really want to be part of that conversation. They, they have a huge amount to say and the form can't really develop without the input that is a shared input that is about um, the notion of a true ensemble. Um, and for me, that's where actor muso work has been at its most exciting, where there's been a complete openness about how that might work. Um, and therefore that isn't always musicals, because, you know, the, the, the Shakespeare work here over the years has always really fascinated me because it is, you know, absolutely that. It's musicians and non-musicians coming together and going, what's right for this piece? Let's create something, let's make something almost from nothing and let's do it as a unit, sometimes without even a kind of MD overseeing it, that it, it really is a kind of shared and collaborative um, development in terms of what can be done. Um, and there the, the limitations seem much less. It seems, like, it seems that um, there's a whole range of kind of possibilities that, um, that, that are thrown up. Um, and, that, you know, I'd love to see more and more work like that. I'd love to see more development of that, of that kind of work where the performer really is at the heart of it because act musos have so much to offer. That's why I love working with them because they bring that other dimension into a, into a room. So um, I suppose that's the thing that excites me most about what might, what might be next. Well, that's lovely. And I think, you know, as you, as you know, we share a kind of relationship to the Watermill Theatre. I perform there, you know, for many years with in John's work and, and various other, you know, ways. Um, and it feels like that space and what, what it represents, which is a kind of bold way of moving forward, but in, you know, in a way that doesn't isolate audiences or put audiences off. It welcomes, it's, it kind of has one foot in the mainstream and one foot in the exploratory. So it feels like a really beautiful... Uh, relationship to develop. So it's thrilling to hear you talk about that need to experiment. And I guess I'm keen to signal to you and to others listening and thinking of studying with us, you know, this place I think has to be about helping professional theatre makers to explore new ideas, not just the students um, mm. here. So that's uh, certainly part of our mission. Well, look, thank you so much for talking to us today um, and all the best with the next thing, Thanks whatever it may be. Much.